Today I'm cutting apart some of the most popular sandals in the world, the Birkenstocks, to see what's inside and why people love these so much. Birkenstock already does a great job of explaining what their shoes are made from, but they don't do a good job of explaining the why. So let's go layer by layer through this shoe and kind of identify what it is and why they might have chosen that particular material. There's not much to this shoe, so this will probably be a pretty short episode of the cut in halves. But let's start with the info of the shoe or sandal. The brand is Birkenstocks, the model is Arizona, and the color is Mocha. And these retail for $99.95 and they are made in Germany. So now let's talk about the upper. So this is where I screwed up. So I just went on their website and sorted it by most popular and bought their most popular sandal. And I assumed it was leather, but I didn't read the description enough. And this is actually their Birkabuck, which is their synthetic leather. So what is Birkabuck? In their words, it's a durable and synthetic upper material with a nubuck leather-like texture and soft backing. And if you look at the cross section of this, you can see the very top layer is that polyurethane type layer that gives it the, the feel and kind of the texture of leather. And then underneath is the felted material that gives it the strength and the, the squishiness kind of of leather. So why synthetic leather instead of real leather? The main reason is it's cheaper. And fortunately, they passed at least hopefully most of the savings onto the consumer because these synthetic Birkabuck versions are 20 to $30 cheaper than the full leather versions. And they can sell their sandals for cheaper and get them into more consumers' hands. And now to the footbed or the insole. So they claim on their website it's a full grain suede, which is kind of an unusual term. Usually they'd call it a, a nubuck leather. So let's cut a sliver off of this or cut top layer in half, pull it apart and see if we can see that grain portion to see if it's just a suede or if it is a new buck made from full grain. So I got the footbed torn out and I don't see a grain pattern in here. If you look really closely at the cross section, there's no defined grain pattern. So I would say this is consistent with the suede term where it's from the split portion of the hide and not from that full grain area. So why a leather footbed? The main reason is this won't wear out like a fabric will. Like if you ever looked inside your, an old worn out pair of shoes, that fabric, the fibers start to separate and it gets ugly in a hurry. This won't do that because it's a lot stronger and it's also pretty breathable, it um, is moisture wicking, and it won't smell as fast as a fabric footbed. Now let's pull out the next layer down, which is this jute fabric. I already tore half of it off. It came out with the insole, but let's get it torn out. So what is jute? It's a natural fiber. It's found in burlap bags, uh, ropes, rugs. Anytime you see something that looks like this, it's usually jute. It's a really strong and lightweight and really cheap material. Um, so why does Birkenstock put it into their shoes? They use it as um, a structural material that helps prevent the crumbling and splitting of the cork. Otherwise, without that, the cork has kind of a natural fault lines in it almost, where if it doesn't have something holding it together well, it splits pretty easily. Um, it's kind of like when woodworkers use a layer of fiberglass on a really intricate piece to help it help prevent it from splitting, if that makes sense. So now let's get to the cork. So my first cut was too deep, so I just ended up cutting the entire shoe in half. But the cork to me is what makes Birkenstocks what they are. And one interesting thing is the cork that they use in these soles is leftover chunks from the wine bottle cork manufacturing. 
and they use a natural latex glue to bind all the little pieces together. So why does Birkenstock use cork in the midsole? Um, we kind of talked about this in the, some of the other boots that we've done, like these two, like the RM Williams, the Ariats, and wherever the Red Wings are. The cork, over time, molds to the shape of your foot, and it gives you a really unique imprint that supports your foot individually and gives you a more comfortable footbed. And that's why you see it in some of the more expensive footwear, whether it's sandals or boots or shoes. So now I'm gonna try to pull off some of this cork and see if there's a layer of jute underneath of here between the outsole and the midsole. It says there is, so let's find out. So I cut enough chunks off of here to see that there is jute on underneath the cork as well. And to give you a visual example of what I was talking about, I'll take a piece of the cork that has the jute on top and bend it. And you see how this isn't breaking or splitting. It's actually really durable. And then I take a piece that has no jute on it cut from the sole and you can see it, it starts to fracture pretty easily. So that's why they put jute on the top and the bottom of the cork to help reinforce it and it makes it easier to resole when it comes time to resoling them. Uh, most cobblers I think are just going to sand this down and then put a new layer of uh, EVA on top of it but it just adds a little extra structural integrity for the longevity of these shoes. So now let's talk about the outsole. The outsole is an EVA foam which stands for ethylene vinyl acetate, basically a plastic with millions of little air bubbles infused into it. So why does Birkenstock use an EVA foam for the outsole? It's really lightweight, it's really comfortable, and it's really cheap. So there are some downsides to EVA outsoles. It compresses over time, it doesn't retain its elasticity or its uh, rebound, I guess is what you'd call it. And it wears out really quickly. So anyone who's owned a pair of these, you've seen it where these smooth off really quickly, especially because they're dragging because they're a sandal. So that's pretty much all the layers in a Birkenstock and why they chose those materials. So overall, what do I think of these shoes? Do I think they're worth the price? It's, it's really hard to tell without comparing it to their cheaper knockoff versions. You're, you're definitely paying for a German made shoe instead of a Chinese made shoe. You're paying for the cork and the jute reinforcement at the top and the bottom. I don't think you would see that in a cheaper version. And you're paying for the name, just like any shoe that has a name, you're always gonna pay a little bit for the name. But I think they're really well built, I think I know that most people love them, and um, now you know kind of what's inside of them and why they use certain materials and why they're so comfortable. Thanks for your guys' support. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, and uh, see you.